Welcome everyone, my name is Diana and I'm a scientist here at the Boonshoff Museum of Discovery and today we're going to be talking all about engineering and experimentation. So today we're going to be moving on to experimentation and in order to experiment we're going to have to learn about gravity and inertia. So what is gravity? Gravity is an interesting thing. It keeps us from flying into the air. Gravity is basically the force that pulls us down to the ground, keeps us grounded, if you would. So what's going to happen to my tennis ball if I drop it? It's going to go straight down, bounce a few times, and eventually settle onto the table. So that's gravity at work. It's pulling the, table, or it's pulling the ball down to the table. Now, this kind of brings me to my next point, inertia. It's a big fancy word, but all it means is how likely something is going to keep doing whatever it's doing. So if my ball is sitting here on the table, how likely is it gonna keep sitting here? Very likely because an object at rest tends to stay at rest. So it's gonna stay at rest until something else happens. And I'm gonna to have to put a force onto the ball in order to make it go anywhere. So if I lightly tap the ball here, it's gonna roll across the table a little bit. Can tap it back into view, maybe a little faster. It goes a little further. So that force I'm applying allows the ball to move. Now I also have something over here. It's a little bit bigger this bowling ball. So if I set this bowling ball onto the table, it's definitely gonna stay where it is. So it's at rest right now, it's gonna stay at rest until an outside force acts upon it. If I lightly tap this ball, is it going anywhere? No. It wiggled a tiny bit, but it's not going anywhere. Same thing, this ball has a lot less mass. So the less mass, same force, it goes far away that ball's not doing anything. So this bowling ball has more inertia than this tennis ball. The more massive object is more likely to keep doing what it's doing. Awesome, let's get this out of the way. All right, so that brings us to today's experiment. We're going to be taking a few objects and trying a few basic designs. First thing we need is a cup. So I have a wide mouth cup here. Basically, all you need is a cup wide enough for whatever object you're using to fall in. So this tennis ball barely fits into my cup. So I'm gonna have my cup here. I'm going to have a piece of cardboard. I'm gonna place that cardboard onto the cup. And I have a toilet paper tube. You can also use a paper towel tube, cut it down to whatever size you would like and place it on top of the cardboard. And now the ball goes on top. The goal of this experiment is to get the ball to fall straight down from the force of gravity into my cup. So I'm gonna do that by only pulling on this piece of cardboard here. So I'm gonna hold my cup and I'm gonna try it. Let's see what happens in three, two, one. I did it! I'm very excited about that. It's very difficult to do. If you don't get it on your first try, don't worry. Just keep practicing until you're skilled at it as well. So, let me grab my toilet paper tube here. For our experiment, we're gonna be changing one variable at a time. Now, a variable is just one piece of the experiment that we change. So for this first part, I'm gonna keep my cardboard the same, I'm gonna keep my paper towel tube the same, but instead of my tennis ball, I'm going to use another ball here. So this one's just a little bit smaller and this one's a little bigger. So what's your hypothesis? What do you think? Is it gonna be easier or harder for this ball to make it down into the cup? Well, the easiest way to find out is to experiment. So let's see what happens in three, two, one. I did it, awesome. So keep doing that, repeat it a few times and see how easy it is. Is it gonna be easier or harder than your tennis ball? And you can use any kind of objects like this. I've got several different balls. I also have a large ball we can use and a medium-sized ball. I'm guessing my hypothesis is that this one's gonna be really hard because it's very light and easy to move. And it's also a little bit bigger than my cup. So I have to land perfectly to get it in there. 
but let's not do all of the experiments for you. I want you to have a chance to do some of these at home. Let's do a few more though. So let's change out my cardboard. So instead of using a thick piece of cardboard that's a little rough and scratchy, I'm gonna use a thin piece of paper. So instead of the cardboard, I place the paper onto the cup, put this paper towel tube on top, grab my favorite ball, and experiment. Oh no, that one flew away from me, which it could have just been me, human error, or maybe that tells me something about how easy this piece of paper is to use. Keep experimenting and find out more. Um, the other variable that we can change is the paper towel tube. How tall do you think we should have the paper towel tube? Would a short one work better? Would a tall one work better? Find out, experiment on your own. Now, you can also extend this activity, do lots of different things. What can you think of to make this a little bit more interesting and more fun? Gravity and physics can be fun in so many different ways. You just have to find a way to experiment with it. So if you liked this video, don't forget to like our YouTube video and subscribe to our channel. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and thank you for joining us.